welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show where honesty is never the best policy. On David Mitchell's team tonight, a comedian with a career spanning 18 years. To put that into perspective, his career is old enough to vote, to get married, and to reject my advances at a bar. It's Phil <laughs> Jupiter's. <laughs> and uh, an actress who, in Sherlock, sometimes appears opposite her partner, Martin Freeman, but who tonight is making an exception and is appearing opposite her future partner, Rob Brydon. <laughs> it's Amanda <laughs> Abington. <laughs> And standing in as guest captain is Greg Davis. And on Greg's team tonight, he's not the first choir master to end up with his name on a list, although... <laughs> <laughs> in his case, it was the Queen's birthday honours list. Right. It's Gareth Malone. <laughs> and, you know, some people... Some people are nervous about mentioning this man's height. Uh, not me. I'll happily say it right to his belt. It's Richard Osman. <laughs> and so we begin with round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. Now, to make things harder, they've never seen the card before. They've got no idea what they'll be faced with. And it's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. And Gareth is first up tonight. A quick technique I often use to determine if someone has singing potential is to get them to sing Bar Bar Black Sheep as if they are frightened. <laughs> David. <laughs> is it? <laughs> um, <laughs> as, as if they are frightened? Yes. Um, and what, what is it about that that tells you anything? It's to determine whether they can perform. But that, Not that... just to sing, but whether they can... Take it to look the terrified level. while singing, because that's <laughs> that's the key skill needed in a choir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's more about them. You know, it might it might be that I want them to um, get get under the skin of a, of, of a piece of music that I'm going to do later. So I want to see if whether they've got what it takes emotionally to connect with the song, even if it is Bar Bar Black Sheep. Is that one of your favourites, Bar Bar Black Sheep? Well, it's very it's a very good tune. Well, look, look, look the, 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 the talk is cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see some of that, and I use this phrase advisedly, Malone magic <laughs> in action. Um, Greg, <laughs> could you sing Bar Bar Black Sheep as if you were frightened, please? Fine, I'm an incredibly versatile actor, let's go. Frightened. <laughs> frightened. frightened. OK. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm three bags full. <laughs> can I, can I, can I, are you being Barry, Robin, or Morris? <laughs> <laughs> I can't quite tell. Well, I, I think we've established that he's got potential, and the important thing is. is give me another he, emotion, Gareth. No, well, it's but uh, that's. Yeah, the, I know, but give me another one. Just... Well, all right. Um, <laughs> sexual <laughs> joy. <laughs> 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 hang, hang on a minute. <laughs> 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 can, I, can I do the frightened one? Oh, you want to do that? <laughs> I, don't, I don't get to look someone in the eye very often. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> you know what I'd love to see? I'd love to see... Is there anybody here, <laughs> do you think, <laughs> who perhaps doesn't like singing, oh. who, who might be sat in between... <laughs> Between his teammates now thinking, oh, I do hope they don't come to me. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there anyone? Why don't we ask David to? Uh, oh, oh, okay, yeah. all right. Oh, wow. Perhaps um, seeing Baba Black Baba Sheep. Black Sheep, like I'm it. very frightened. Go on, yeah. David. Okay. Baba <laughs> Black Sheep, have you any wool? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Three bags full. <laughs> you know that Gareth didn't want you to sing Bar Bar Black Sheep as if you were a sheep, don't you? <laughs> but what do you ascertain from what he's just done? Well, I mean, I, he can sing in tune and, um... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
in the broadest sense. <laughs> yeah, and making people feel comfortable. Um, and, do, you know, let's not start with the Mozart Requiem. Let's right. start with Barbara Black Sheep as if frightened. <laughs> so, what are you thinking of this, of this claim of Gareth's? I think it's true. Also, you have got to have a thing, if you're auditioning lots of people, you can't think about it with each one. You've, you've got to have a thing you yeah. ask everyone to yeah. do. Yeah. So we, I think we think well, it... I think we're saying it's true. Okay. I think it's true. OK. Uh, Gareth Malone. Truth or lie? It is... A lie. Oh! Ah! Nice. Nice. <laughs> Phil, it's your turn. Ah. <clears throat> Hit him. I am addicted to rescuing loose trolleys at my local supermarket. <laughs> Greg's team. <laughs> Supermarkets and trolleys, what do you think? How often do you do this, Phil? When I go shopping? <laughs> In my experience at the, a lot of the supermarkets I've been to, there is a person who often deals with... Yeah, that's who... Phil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just wondering, is there any, has there ever been any tension between you and the trolley person at your supermarket? Oh. If the trolley person appears, I hide behind a car. <laughs> <laughs> if you go past in a, a canal and you see a trolley that's been chucked in, as is often the case in canals, yeah. will you attempt to retrieve that? I may now. I, I don't, don't know. It depends how old it is. The thing is, the fear would be that an old trolley in a canal will not properly tessellate with a new trolley in a waitress. <laughs> It depends be, when the trolley's been thrown in the canal. Of well, it, well, it could yeah, be, of course, it, it could, could have be, been recently thrown in, yeah. but you can't tell, really, until you've got it yeah. out. And then if you try and make it, what, you know, mate... What if it's a, a Safeway trolley? The Safeway now no longer in business. But, yeah. yeah, but they thought that about Labradors and Poodles, didn't they? And <laughs> yeah. somebody managed it. But can you imagine <laughs> the, the, the psychological... Are you saying there's going to be a Safeway trolley? <laughs> <laughs> So, is he telling the truth? I think it's true. I, I'm, I, yeah, I think it's true. You think it's true? Mm, Gareth does. My oh. respected colleague thinks it's true. Oh, thanks. Hold on. <coughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm overruling both of them. I oh, think it's a lie. Oh. 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 You wow. say it's a lie? Yeah. Oh. Even though both members of your team think it's true? That's right. That's so. a very, very irresponsible use of power. Perhaps it is. <laughs> Max not here. Uh, this is my bench, we'll just and I tell true. you it's a lie. <laughs> Why do you think it's a lie? What, what about that was unconvincing? It's irrelevant. I've made my decision. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're saying that it's a lie, um, Phil? Were you telling the truth there, or were you telling us a lie? I was telling the truth. No! <laughs> what can you do? What can you do? Tell you what, Greg. This, th this captaincy lark isn't as easy as it looks, <laughs> is it? Uh, OK, our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of Greg's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Gareth. <laughs> Gareth Malone, what is this Gareth to you? This is my old neighbour Gareth, and when I was learning a song, he would distract me by singing the same song in his own flat, but in a different language. Right. <laughs> Richard Osman, how do you know Gareth? This is Gareth. When he came to watch a recording of Pointless, uh, I have to ask for him to be moved away from the front row because his behaviour was putting me off my statistics. <laughs> <laughs> and Greg. How do you know Gareth? This is Gareth. He was the rickshaw driver I once paid to pedal me home. By the time we arrived, he was so exhausted, I let him stay on my sofa. <laughs> 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 so there we have it. Um, Gareth's synchronised singer, Richard's pointless punter, or Greg's shattered chauffeur. David's team, who do you want to start with? Gareth. Uh, what language does he sing the song in, or does it vary? Um, uh, he was singing in English. And what... So what were you singing? German. Ah. What song? Um, I think... Uh, I think it was Bach's St Matthew Passion. That's what I thought it would be. Yeah, uh, yeah. How... <laughs> So how often did this happen? Enough for, it, for me to remember to mention it now. Because... <laughs> <laughs> If a neighbour was singing a song next door to me, the first thing I'd do would be 
attempt to I... translate it back to Same English. Yeah. Yeah. And then... Sing it as an off-putting kind of... Yeah. Yeah. Especially through a wall. That really cuts deep. <laughs> How does it go, Gareth? I can't remember it in English. You don't really want to hear it, do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd um... like to hear it as if you're frightened. <laughs> Da Jesus diese Rede vollendet hatte, sprach er zu seine Jüngern. Da, 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 da. And he was singing exactly the same song, well, the other side of a wall. Yeah, in, in, I mean, actually, um, in English. I think up, up a semitone. So he's, he's your neighbour, he's also called Gareth, yeah. he's singing the same song in a different language right. and a semitone uh, different. It's almost unbelievable, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> now, um, <laughs> Richard, what was the behaviour in the front row yeah, that awesome. Gareth did that was well, putting he, you off your stat? I sit very close to the audience on Pointless, where my little desk is, and there's an audience very close to me. Xander is further away for contractual reasons. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, lots of people come and see Pointless regularly and they know if they turn up early they can sit in the front row and Gareth is one of those people. And there's a trick that people in the audience here, I'm sure if you've been to lots of shows, know that there's a way of getting yourself on a TV show which is laugh in an unusual way. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> so you say now Amanda will almost certainly be on the show. Yeah. That's yeah. our... Uh... <laughs> So, Gareth had a, a way of laughing. He didn't do it in the first... Cos he'd come for two shows. He didn't do it in the first show. And in the second show, he'd clearly developed a laugh that sounded sort of like a, like a donkey braying sort of a laugh <laughs> every time something funny was said. So he did it, like, four times in a show. Yes, can we hear the, uh, your version of the laugh? It'd be like you... a kind... It'd be like... God. It'd be like a kind of... <laughs> <laughs> that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, and I could hear it all the way through, and so in the first recording break, I said to the floor manager, so, so could, you, could you get him moved to the back? Yeah, can I can I ask a question at this point? How did Gareth react? Because if you were to if we were to pick somebody here and say sorry, could you could you go and sit over there? They might be upset. I mean, how did he take? No, it? floor managers are very good. They always just say this for camera reasons. We need three more people at the back or something like that. You see, oh, they so do he all wasn't the time. told what the reason was. No, no, of course not. How do you well, think okay. he feels now? Well, yeah. <laughs> he came, he literally came up to me about three days later and said, I know why they moved me. They moved me because I was doing that laugh. And I said, yeah. In what context did he come up to you three days later and were you alarmed? <laughs> <laughs> During a recording, he sauntered up to you <laughs> while you, you were halfway through <laughs> reading out some information and went, uh, <laughs> by the way, Richard, I know yeah. why I got moved the other day and I know why security are coming for me now. <laughs> well, of course not. There's also, we have all little recording breaks and stuff like that. Right. OK. You so know, during a, a recording break, he went, I know why I'm laughing normally now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, David, what about Greg? So, uh, Greg, t tell us your story. Um, Not your whole life, you no. know, just a... <laughs> just a rickshaw bit. Yeah. I yeah. had a, a, a very big celebration in the, the centre of town. Oh, what? What reason? I was, I was celebrating uh, leaving teaching. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So, uh, I had a very big celebration just after my last night at school. OK. Which mm -hmm. uh, it was ludicrously big. OK. You emerge from the bar in question. Yeah. A little worse for wear. I was off offensively drunk. <laughs> a rickshaw. Yeah. Why? Uh, if I'm honest, I was showing off. I, it'd, been, it'd been a day of showing off. How, how far did you have to take, Gareth? It, it was... He had to take me from central London to Hounslow, which is... Hounslow? Yeah. <laughs> it's something like... It's just shy of ten miles. How much was it? It was £163. <laughs> how long and... did it take, roughly? Um, I mean, I honestly don't you know. Don't, you don't I honestly don't, I don't gonna, know. I thought you were waiting for the length of time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you arrive. Yeah. You, you, you give him his money. When does the whole idea of offering him a bed for the night? I, I didn't. We didn't even discuss the money because I got off uh, the bike, and uh, by which point I was incredibly sober, and I looked at his face, and it was. Uh, <laughs> It was grey. I mean, I genuinely feared for his life. So I said, oh, my God, you must come in for a bit. And I made him a cup of tea. We're better than that, guys. Great. We're better than that. Where did, where did he put his rickshaw? Is that, is that <laughs> your... How did it progress from the cup of tea to the <laughs> sleeper? 
Because, because honestly, I, I, I was so by the time I he got He didn't home. say a couple, he said, would you like to come in for a bit? <laughs> yeah. Ex exhausted from the bit. <laughs> biscuit! Biscuit! Fell asleep on the sofa. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let, 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 let's be clear, you, you, you've invited him up for a bit, you go in... <laughs> what? Yeah. What happens? After the cup of tea, I decided that he was clearly still very close to death. <laughs> so I said, uh, would you like to crash on the sofa? And I'll give you a, an extra little detail. As he went past my front garden, he said, what is that? Because I had set fire to my teaching outfit before I'd gone out <laughs> when my friends first came round, and there was half of a trouser leg left. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Gareth saw it and went, Is that half a trouser leg? Has, <laughs> <You've> has <laughs> someone spontaneously <laughs> combusted? <Yeah. laughs> right, so. We need an answer. So, uh, David's team uh, is Gareth, Gareth Malone's synchronised singer, is he Richard's pointless punter? Or is he Greg's shattered chauffeur? I've got a horrible feeling he's the pointless punter after all of that. You think pointless punter? Yeah. See, I'm thinking rickshaw driver. Yeah, the detail that Greg was giving was. The detail of incredible. the burnt trouser yeah. leg is. That was like he'd forgotten himself and he was getting into his story. Yeah. Oh, I'm really excited. But, but, you're, but you're discounting Gareth altogether? Oh, completely, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so you're going, you're going for the two, the two tall yeah. guys there, oh, the two know. lanky dudes. Hey. Yeah. Um, you know what? We're just two guys. We're just two people, well, all right? We are. Two, the two lampposts there. We're just... Um... <laughs> <laughs> so, David, what are you going to say? You, um, you, you, uh, I'm going I'm to... Because I don't... I genuinely you're don't, abstaining. So I'm, I'm going to go with the team captain's final decision. If I had a gun to your head, though, Amanda, and don't rule it out... <laughs> <laughs> who would you go for? Greg. You'd go, you'd go for Greg, all right. Or okay. Rich. <laughs> what do you think? I think Greg. You think Greg now? Oh, no. We'll say Greg, we'll say Greg. Like They're yeah. saying that it is Greg. Not... Gareth. <laughs> He's a pointless contestant. Would you please... <laughs> I've taken your answer. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Would you now observe the rules of yeah. the game yeah. and please <clears throat> treat this with a little more respect? <laughs> Gareth, would you please reveal your true identity? My name is Gareth, and I once distracted Gareth. <laughs> yes, Gareth was Gareth's synchronised singer. Gareth, thank you very much thank indeed. Thank you. Which brings us to our final round, Quickfire Live. And we will start with... It is Richard. Every time I lock my front door, I squawk like a parrot. <laughs> that way... <laughs> <laughs> that way, if I later worry that I didn't lock it, I remember the squawk and know that I did. <laughs> David's team. Quite genuinely, I think that makes perfect sense. Yeah. As someone yeah. who's slightly OCD yeah. about yeah. locking stuff, and that, what you need is to remember the yeah. moment when you knew it was locked. Bang. Yes. And a squawk of a parrot's as good as anything else. Give us a squawk. Squawk! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can okay. see the door now. Yeah. Although but, uh... I get confused. Maybe I think, oh, I squawked and I didn't lock it. And no, then no, I no, you me. squawk after you lock. Oh, OK. So it goes, it goes <laughs> lock, squawk. And you, when you do your, your doorway, I don't know your doorway, but are you in view of neighbours? <laughs> Have you ever been witnessed doing this? I'm in... Well, I'm in hearing view of neighbours that side, not hearing, hearing view. Hearing view? <laughs> 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 I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in whatever the word for hearing view Ear is. Earshot. <laughs> Richard, you're coming out of the house, OK? Yeah. You're reaching into your pocket to get your keys. Act it out for us. Shall I be the door? Yeah, why don't you... Yeah, I'll tell this you what, is going to be, be the, the worst door? mime ever. <laughs> <laughs> There's my keys. <laughs> Are you going to penetrate Gareth? <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want me to do it, I won't do it. No, we want you to do it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 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 um, 
<laughs> no, no, I don't believe him anymore. <laughs> no, the, the squawk was too nonchalant. Yeah, it was, wasn't What it? you need is the OCD focus. Yeah. The squawk is your point of remembrance. Yeah. You just squawk like you were saying goodbye to the door in <laughs> parrot language. By and large, it's, it's quite perfunctory. I'll, I'll admit to that. It's kind of plausible, cos it's him and he's a bit of an odd bod. What? What? <laughs> On earth has given you that opinion? Well, he's so tall. You know you're saying this in hearing view of me, don't you? <laughs> um, maybe he does a different Again. bird. Yeah. That's what's going to happen to us. We say, ah, oh, I don't do a parrot, I, I do just... this one. <gasps> what bird is that? <laughs> I don't know, but it's in all the Tarzan films. <laughs> And it's also, it's also was... reminded me I turned the gas off when I left the house. <laughs> 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 That's so What do you think? What Is you it think? the truth? I, 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 can't, I can't believe you do that much stuff when you go out. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't buy the nonchalant squawk. I don't think it's true of Richard. OK, Richard, were you telling the truth or um, were you telling a lie? It is... A lie. <laughs> It's a lie. Next. <coughs> oh. <coughs> it's Amanda. I spent years making sure I didn't step on my imaginary pet rabbit. When I finally got a real rabbit, I did just that with disastrous consequences. <laughs> Greg's team. What was his name or her name? Brian or Henry, I can't remember, because oh, it was a long time ago. Did you have more than one imaginary rabbit, then? No, it was just one, Greg, come on. Yeah. Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Where did the rabbit live? Was he, was he in a hutch in the garden, or was he one of those rabbits that's allowed to romp through the house? He was on the bottom step of the stairs. The imaginary that rabbit lived on the bottom step of the stairs. Of the stairs. And where did you step on the real rabbit? <clears throat> I was in the garden, and we used to let my pet rabbit run around. It was snowing, so it was white everywhere, and I had a, it, he was a black rabbit, and I used to run around with him, and he ran under my foot, and I trod on him. In the snow? Yeah, and he died. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> did stuff come out of his mouth? Oh. <laughs> Lee would never have asked that. No. <laughs> I never thought I'd say it, David, but I miss him. <laughs> <laughs> when you got your new rabbit, what was your new rabbit called? The real rabbit? What Elvis. Was the... Elvis? Mm. Do you remember where you were when you heard that Elvis had died? <laughs> <laughs> You've got to ask yourselves this. Does she look like a rabbit killer? Me? I say yes, she does. But... <laughs> Does she to you? That's the key thing. Well, I've got a very, mm. I've got a very firm idea, but I, I thought you might. You I, had a very I, firm no, idea last time, didn't you? I, I've learnt my lesson. I'm beginning to realise how this program works. So, Scarf, <laughs> what's your opinion? I, I'm genuinely interested. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do, do. You know, I don't know. I, uh... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, I think true. You think true? Mm. Okay. I don't think true, based on the so you not being able to remember the name of her own. Uh, Imaginary friend, but casting vote. Oh gosh! All right. Okay. I'm going to get true. Then, against my better judgment, <laughs> <laughs> we as a team will say that that is true. that's quite clearly rubbishly nonsensical story is true. <laughs> you say it's true, Amanda. Truth or lie? True. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Next. <coughs> it is Greg. I once invented a language so I could speak to my sister in secret. I even gave this language its own name. <laughs> What's the name of the language? It uh, is not uh, a word. <laughs> that you will have heard of, and the word is cushion. Cushion? What? Yeah. Cushion. So like, like cushion, but cushion. <laughs> yeah. And cushion. could you say something in cushion? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, what? Could, 
you say something? <laughs> is that, is that what guess. yes is in Cushing? I didn't claim that the language was sophisticated. <laughs> I would say you're arbitrarily adding a sort of sh sound. So do a sentence. OK. <laughs> uh, <laughs> ask a mensch... <laughs> ask a mensch... <laughs> <laughs> um, it's obviously been a long time since I lost Cleam in Joyskin, the experience of uh, what I lost to you. You sat at the shop on Sesame Street. <laughs> if it's so simple, what did I say then? Yeah. You, said, you said I am loving, loving the experience, experience of what I like. No, I didn't. I said I'm largely enjoying the experience of what I like to you. So uh, it Lost. looks like it's not a sheep or schedule. <laughs> <laughs> So, where, where did the name for this language, Cushing, come from? I, I honestly can't remember, but it was called uh, Cushing. And I can tell you, uh, part of the language, and I, I'm afraid I can't explain this to you, would be sometimes mid-sentence, sometimes at the end of a sentence, <laughs> just to loudly proclaim, Cushing! <laughs> Cushing is talking with random sh if you can squeeze them in, yeah. and occasionally going, Cushon! <laughs> in, in the middle or at the end of a sentence. You know, my, and my parents... <laughs> my parents didn't... <laughs> they didn't work out, Cushing, as simplistic as you clearly think it is. They didn't work it out, so... They didn't work it out. When you no said, I, no I squanched to go to the shops, they went, oh, what well on earth did oh he my say? God. Hang on, David. Speaking... Push on! <laughs> <laughs> so, David, he's been quite fulsome, a lot of detail, but is it the truth or is it a lie? What do you think? Well, I believed him up until the point where he went, Cush on! And then I... <laughs> and then I, I he's enjoying Cush on yeah, far he's, too he's much. he's enjoying it. Uh, although he could be enjoying it with the fact that his yeah, sister is yeah. watching their secret language being yeah. outed. Yeah. She, won't, she won't dislike it. She'll be ashkalushkli delighted. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> I don't... I don't... And that, that, my friends, so far is the biggest Cush on of them all! <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not inconceivable. But it is unlikely. What do you think? Truth or lie? Lie. Lie, let's do lie. it. Lie. You're saying it's a lie? OK. Greg, truth or lie? Aishk, washk, telishk, the trushk. Oh! <laughs> And that noise uh, signals time is up. It's the end of the show. I can reveal that Greg's team have won oh. by four points to two. Oh. But, of course, it's not just a team game. My individual liar of the week this week is Gareth Malone. Oh. Gareth Malone. Something those military husbands might want to think about next time they leave you alone with their wives. Good night. <laughs>